sort of let ChatGPT take over our content creation, and we documented the entire process. And we've lost control. Just kidding. We started with a blog, turned that blog into a YouTube video, and then turned that into social media posts for LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. In this video, we'll show you exactly what we did, how it went, and what the limitations were. Let's go. So first we had our content manager, Melody, create a blog post. She already knew the topic for the blog and was deep into the research stage when she decided to use ChatGPT to outline the article, create a list of keywords for SEO, and come up with ideas for the meta title and description. She also used it to fine tune parts during editing and found it did a great job providing various options on how to rephrase any parts that were unclear. Melody still had to write the blog post and everything that ChatGPT contributed needed to be proofread, fact checked, and edited. ChatGPT just wasn't able to produce something so in depth and an AI tool isn't going to capture your unique writing style, which is especially important with long form written content. I tried to see if there was a workaround for this and actually sent ChatGPT a writing sample of melodies and told it to model what it wrote based on that. And it didn't work. But if you were a public figure before 2021, then it actually works very well. For example, give it a prompt to rewrite copy the way Ryan Reynolds would say it. And you actually get a very Ryan-esque output. So where did ChatGPT really shine for Melody in the blog writing process? Melody said she usually spends about 50% of her time researching and the other 50% writing and editing. ChatGPT made the biggest impact on the time she spent researching. Now it was my turn to create a video from this blog post. I quickly learned that in order to get the most out of ChatGPT, I needed to work with it in smaller steps. If you send the link to your blog or copy and paste the entire article and ask ChatGPT to turn it into a video script with X number of words, it's not gonna do a very good job. Most times it would generate a script based on only the first half of the blog and skip the entire second half or entire sections. And sometimes it wouldn't even be able to generate a response if I gave it too much text. So I started with asking it to create an outline and it did a good job. I then asked it to flesh out each section and it gave me some decent points to work with. From there, I copy and pasted what ChatGPT wrote into my Google Doc. I went through and expanded each section using the blog post as a guide, and I ended up rewriting most of what ChatGPT wrote. But if I ever got stuck on how to word something, I would pop back into ChatGPT and ask it to either rephrase what I wrote or write me something new. Now you might be wondering, did ChatGPT really write the script? Not really. If you came into this expecting AI to do the work for you, I think you'll be disappointed with the result. But if you think of AI tools as a way to save time and energy, then this is exactly what it did. Where ChatGPT excels is with ideation, outlining, rephrasing, and helping you when you're stuck. Sometimes the creative juices aren't flowing, and I find the hardest part of script writing is when you first get started and you're staring at a blank page wondering where to start. Using ChatGPT completely bypassed that. Even though I ended up rewriting most of what it gave me, it gave me a starting point. It was also a big help whenever I got stuck. Overall, it ended up saving me at least one to two hours. And when I was finished, I felt I had far more energy left in the tank. Now it was time for our social team to create posts for social media. Cam looked through the blog post to identify a specific portion she thought has a lot of value for a short video. She then asked ChatGPT to write a 30 second social media video script that is emotionally engaging and addresses our target audience, agency owners, in the first sentence of the video. She also asked it to deliver it in the form of key points, add humor, and end with a call to action to go to the blog. Using that first draft, she asked ChatGPT to tweak certain parts to change the tone or length, and then edit it on her own from there. Overall, she said it saved her about 30 minutes to one hour. And out of everyone in this process, Cam seemed to get the most out of ChatGPT, and its limitations weren't as glaring. And this is because she was creating short form content and was very specific with her prompts. Then it went to Diana to create captions for our posts. She switched back and forth between ChatGPT and Grammarly. Diana's experience was very similar to mine. She found ChatGPT was great at giving her a starting point and getting the creative juices flowing. It was also great for creating hooks. Much like everyone else, she needed to edit what ChatGPT created and would choose phrases, sentences, or even just a few words she liked and rearrange them to get the caption she liked. Grammarly did a good job at keeping everything grammatically correct, but sometimes at the cost of personality and writing style. Overall, it cut her production time in half. Since our experiment, ChatGPT has become a regular tool for us when we create content. Now, if only I could get AI to record and edit the video too. Maybe we'll just be serving our AI overlords, but not yet. Now it's your turn. How has ChatGPT changed the way you make content? Let us know down in the comments. And if you found any of this to be useful, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel so you don't miss another video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.